oh, I'm going to pipe him up over the, and if everything works well, we'll be, uh, we'll be happy about it. So go ahead, uh, Bryce. Let's watch this uh, minute and a half uh, promo video. The way things work are, we don't have a video back there. Hello. Hold on here. Because I don't want that feedback to happen. Tony? Hello. Okay, there's, yeah. So we, I'm right here. All right. Hold on. I knew this was might going to happen. We, we can't call and be on video at the same time. Because Hello, Matt. Go live. Go live. It's getting feedback here with our phones. You talk. You talk. Okay. Hello, Calvary Worship. Good morning. So glad to uh, greet you this morning. Thank you for allowing me, uh, Matt, Pastor Matt, just have a few minutes here. As you just saw, this was our uh, promotional video for our Columbia campaign. And uh, on Wednesday, here in a few days, I'm getting on a plane to go and reach four cities. A four city was added four cities with me and another evangelist splitting up in each city to reach those cities uh, with the gospel, the life-giving gospel of Jesus Christ. I just have two verses I want to share with you this morning, Calvary Worship. In my morning uh, devotional time this morning, I came across this scripture and it really resounded in my spirit really heavily. And I felt like I'm supposed to share this, but in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 37, this is what the word of God says. For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come, and he will not delay. For yet a little while, he who is coming, he will come, and he will not delay. And there is a promise, just like the, the, the prophets promised, that he would come the first time as the Messiah in a prophecy. The prophecy came to pass, the word of God came to pass, and he came in Bethlehem. And just like that, he said, I'm coming again. He said, told his disciples, I am coming again. And just like that, we know that he is coming again and he is coming soon, according to the word of God. And because of that, this is what I know. When I read Mark 16, 16 15, he says, he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go and preach the gospel. Now, I read that and I did, took it as my own assignment. It's not for this person. It's not for that person. He spoke it to me and he said, go and preach, go into all the world and preach the gospel to everyone. So, you know, Life Nations is on an assignment to do just exactly that. That's what he said to do before he left. And thank you, Calvary Worship, because you have partnered with us in the gospel. And every time we go, people get saved. People give their lives to Jesus. People get healed and people get encouraged. And I want to thank you for your faithful and generous partnership. But I do need to be honest with you, Calvary Worship. Whenever there's a need, I'm going to be honest with you and tell you. And I'm getting on the plane on Wednesday and we're still short on the budget. We have an amazing opportunity for four cities 
to do two events in each city every night, the, the, the most impact we've ever had. Um, but we are still short and we are needing uh, some generous giving, so God to intervene, trusting God to help us to meet that budget to go and preach the gospel. But we are doing exactly what Jesus said to do because he is coming again. And I don't know what else to do except to say, yes, sir, uh, we will do that with your grace and with your ability. We're going to go into all the world and we're going to preach the unfailing, powerful gospel that is the power of God to save. So th thank you, Calvary Worship. Um, like I said, it's just a few days and, and I'm just praying and believing for God to put everything together so we can have all we need to go and to advance his kingdom and to let his light shine in the lives of people. Calvary Worship, thank you so much for this time and uh, thank you for your generosity. And, and we're just believing that uh, we wanna bring in the biggest harvest we can before he comes and we just want to be found faithful. So God bless you, Matt. God bless you, Cabin Worship. Thank you so much. I love you guys. You have any questions? What it wait, church. I don't know how much time you It sounds good, Tony. It is uh Hey, this isn't so bad. Can you hear me, Tony? Yes, I sure can. Oh, good, good. Uh, yeah, so praise the Lord, uh, the group here, the, we, we're excited. Uh, does anyone have any questions for Pastor Tony? All right, uh, we're, we'll, uh, we're going to continue to keep you in prayer. We'll give, I'll give them an opportunity later on today to give and how to give, and I appreciate you uh, uh, taking some time and speaking into our lives today. No, I appreciate you so much, Pastor Matt. I appreciate you, Captain Worship. Thank you so much. Uh, God bless you guys. I love you. Amen. Praise the Lord. All the way right now, he's in Florida, but we're working on technology, getting it to a place to where maybe perhaps when he's in Bogota or when he's in some one of these places, we can, he can take a few minutes to, uh, to share what God is doing in those places. It looks like the children, if anyone, all the kids, if you uh, haven't already, if you would like, uh, there is children's church going on right now, um, and you're free to and you're free to do that. The rest of you are stuck with me. <sighs> Yay. <laughs> with such enthusiasm. I, I understand. I understand. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I, I, it, it's a, such an exciting time when Tony is, you know, again, 15 years ago when I met him, he had just got out of prison two or three years before. That, eh, probably three, three or four years, somewhere in there. And uh, when I say he got out of prison, that's when he got saved. Those that don't know this, he got saved when he was in jail for, uh, uh, for selling drugs. And it was going to be a long jail term. And God said, you know what? I got a different plan, a different purpose. He saved him. It wasn't one of those jail term saves where, you know, oh, God, if only, and then I'll serve you. And then when God works and then they, just, they forget, no, God not only saved him, he called him into the mission field. And uh, he's not ever looked back and there's been a number of different times Tony has said things that have stuck with me one of them about Tony that I appreciate for him and I've shared this to him as well is uh, you know he did he spent six months in prison at that time but he was looking to perhaps get a 20-year sentence like it was it was going to be perhaps even longer the things that uh, were charged or potentially charged against, against him and when he was released, even to this day at different times, he'll say, no matter how bad it gets, no matter how I, much I may not have or how much suffering I may be in, I was looking to 20 years to life in prison. I'm free. I'm free. And that gives him a perspective in his life that no matter how he realizes that he he is walking free and that's a blessing to him and it's an encouragement to him and having the right perspective is very important so if you have your scriptures with you today I want you to turn to Ephesians chapter 1 Ephesians chapter 1 the title of today's message is sending thanks and we are continuing in our series I've been preaching. I've been drawing from chapter 1 of Ephesians. And 
And drawing upon these truths, and the Apostle Paul wanted to make it very clear in previous messages, as I shared, he, wanted the, the, he wrote this letter to the church there in Ephesus. He wanted them to be sure they understood of their inheritance in Christ. Who likes, you know, you've heard the phrase, if there's a will, no, if there's a will, I want to be in it. Well, there's that one too, but I, I prefer the other one, amen? Anyway, so uh, inheritance. Has anyone here ever received an inheritance before? All right, a few hands go up. Uh, you can see me afterwards. We get your name's number. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, we like inheritances. We think of, oh my goodness, you know, I remember when I was very, very young and, and I remember dreaming about, oh, what if I won the lottery? You know, how would I spend the money and what would we do? And, and you know, you have those kind of dreams and those ambitions and and uh, or an inheritance and and I think a few weeks I shared that uh, when my father passed this year uh, his you know his personal belongings you know the uh, he was a a, a a man of God he served in ministry uh, full time since he was about 27 years old and he was 70 76 well he I guess he sort of retired about 10 years prior to that so for 50 years or so he served in ministry uh, God saved him as a 25-year-old adult male. He was, you know, drinking, smoking two or three packs of cigarettes a day, cursing with the best of them, all those things. And how many know that God said, I got a plan and a purpose. And he, he received Christ as his Lord and Savior and also called, God called him into the ministry. So I'm a PK. And so he served uh, in the ministry all throughout life. Rich heritage, blessed, served, and ministered to so many people. But his personal belongings, and I say this in no way to disparage him, he walked by faith and there were so many times he served the Lord. My inheritance was, <clears throat> in terms of you want to think of finances or things like that, was a, was a silver dollar worth about twelve and a half dollars I'm thankful for that. Again, it in no way impugns him and how he lived his life. But whether he, I walked into a $12.5 inheritance or $12.5 million inheritance, I have greater riches in Christ Jesus. My inheritance, the Lord, the Paul here says in Ephesians that we have been gifted an inheritance in Christ Jesus that surpasses any and all physical manifestations, physical things. I've seen people come into a bunch of money. I've seen people go out of a bunch of money. I've seen a bunch of money come into a marriage and blow it to smithereens. I've witnessed people that have had things that were blown up, burned, destroyed, fallen apart. No matter how nice that car is, give it five or six years, it's not going to be worth that much. And we get so focused in on heaven or on earthly materials and things. And Paul wanted to remind us that we have far greater riches in Christ Jesus, the inheritance of the saints. I want you to say with me right now, I have an inheritance in Christ Jesus. Yes, we do. Later on in Ephesians chapter 1, Paul said that the guarantee of that is God has given us His Holy Spirit as a guarantee or a deposit. In other words, your inheritance, we know we, we are guaranteed, Bible, uh, Paul says, one of our in spiritual inheritance, and we've been adopted into the family of God. And so uh, we are part of the family. We are a son or daughter of the king, the king. Amen. And with that, we have privileges. With that comes the inheritance and all that comes with that. And our identity is no longer who we were. Thank you, Jesus. I got saved young. I was about seven years old. Boy, I didn't, you know, God saved me from prison. He saved me, for, you know, from all these things. I was young. I was seven years old. You know, I, how bad could it have been? But at, even at seven years old, I, I understood my need for a Savior. But there are others that perhaps you're here today where you, it was in adulthood. Maybe you have a story like Tony. Maybe you have a story like my dad. Maybe you have a story where you're front end. What was life like before Christ? You've got some, you got some history there. And so there's, you can identify with who you are now, but your identity is no longer who you were. 
It doesn't matter how evil, doesn't matter how rotten, doesn't matter how whatever it might be, you have a new identity in Christ Jesus. You've been given a, a new inheritance, a new family name. You've been adopted into the family of God. And what a tremendous blessing that is. And so Paul begins, has been unpacking that, and we've been kind of walking through that a little bit. But now I want you to read to you Ephesians chapter 1, beginning at verse 15. I'm just going to read five verses right now, verses 15 through 20. Every since I first heard of your, faith, of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray you constantly, I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called, his holy people who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand with incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe in him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand and in the heavenly realms. The title of today's message is Sending Thanks. One of the first things we learn from the life of the Apostle Paul here is in verse, at the very beginning, verse 15, when he says, uh, I ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord and your love for God's people. So Paul's writing this letter to this church. We know that today, that was the church in Ephesus, but God allowed this letter to be put into the Bible, so it's not just a letter to Ephesus, it's a letter that we too as a church can look to. And one of the activities, one of the things that the Apostle Paul saw, and that he uh, complimented this group of people, was two things. Their great love for God, or their great faith for God, and their love for one another. And if there's a reputation that any church should have, it's those two things. Calvary Worship Center, which is made up of individuals, which makes you, the reputation that you should have to the world around you is that you have great faith in God and that you love people. Great faith in God and that you love people. Jesus said that uh, in John, he said, the world will know that you, speaking to his disciples, that you are my disciples for your love for one another, for your love, great love. We have a great God. Therefore, we are to serve Him with great faith. We are to love people with great love because we have a great God. And so Paul admonishes him on this. And this as individuals, that's how we should live our life. We should live with great faith in God and great love for one another because we serve a great God. So he commends them for that. He said, I have not stopped thanking God for you. God, uh, Apostle Paul here is also, we're seeing in this scripture, this verse, that Paul expressed his thankfulness to these people. According to church history, there, uh, he had probably established this church uh, uh, years, a few years before, and so there were people there he knew. This wasn't just a letter that he was writing to a group of people that he had never met. There were many there that he, that he had knew, but it was growing, and he was busy planting other churches, and so he was writing letters. And he was telling them that I never stop thanking God for you. I give thanks to my God whenever I pray, I make my request for all of you with joy. Paul sh- shared that to the church when he wrote at Philippi. This, so he said, I've not stopped thanking God for you. Philippians 1, 3, and 4 says, every time I think of you, again, this is Paul writing a letter to a different church. Every time I think of you, I give thanks to my God. Whenever I pray, I make my requests for all of you with joy. This was a habit. This wasn't just something Paul did to the church here in Ephesus. It says he, he started his letter to Philippi in the same way. Then he wrote another letter to Timothy. Timothy was his young disciple that he had raised up. And he says to, to Timothy in 2 Timothy verse, or chapter 1, verse 3, he says, Timothy, I thank God for you. The God I serve with a clear conscience, just as my ancestors did. Night and day, I constantly remember you in my prayers. 
Paul is expressing again these two main things, that he's giving thanks and he's praying for them. He's grateful and he's expressing his thankfulness and he's praying for them. Two of the greatest blessings and gifts that you can give to the people around you is these two things, that you are grateful and you express that gratitude and you pray for them. And you pray for them constantly and you pray for them often. So Paul, first of all, one of the compliments or one of the things that he was in gratitude to the church here in Ephesus was their, their great faith in God and their love for one another. And then he says, I, I pray for you often with great, regularly, he said, praying for them regularly. Not only did Paul say these things to the Ephesus, not only did he say these things to the church at Philippi, and he said these things to Timothy, but he wrote another letter called the letter, uh, it's called Philemon. And there he says, I always thank my God when I pray for you, Philemon. This was an individual. Because I keep hearing about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all of God's people. What happens here? We see it again. Your faith in God and your love for God's people. He said the same thing to the church in Ephesus. Paul clearly, I'll tell you what, I learned something years ago, is what you recognize and what you honor or reward gets gets repeated it's real simple when you train your dogs what you reward gets repeated eventually they learn you want to teach them to roll over well at first they don't know what the clue you're talking about but the moment they start to roll you give them a treat and then finally they make that, you know, you give them a treat. You don't give them a treat unless they roll over. And eventually they get the idea, if I do this pattern, you're going to reward me. What gets rewarded gets repeated. And so Paul is rewarding the church here. He's reminding them what he sees in them. What you see, God, he's drawing out of them what he knows God wants to do in and through them. He wants to increase their faith. And so now, when we go back to Ephesians, Paul begins to unpack how he's praying for you, for him, what he is doing to pray for them. And the things that Paul is doing here, we can begin doing for one another. You can begin doing as well. First thing we're already learning is that Paul was an encourager. He was exhorting. He was encouraging them. He was telling them what they were doing well. Who here likes to be told what you do well? Who here likes it when people notice when you do something well? I do. Absolutely. I enjoy it when I'm in. I am encouraged when someone recognizes something that I've done and they recognize that it was done well. Because the opposite happens quite a lot too. When we're recognized for what we do bad. When we're reminded for how we have failed. Doesn't that just feel so good? Don't you just enjoy it when someone says, you know, there you go again. 15 years. Are we ever going to get past this? No, not as long as you keep bringing it up, that's for sure. <laughs> no one likes that. That's a discourager. We're looking for encouragers. We're looking for those who see the greatness in us, who notice things that happen right, and then begin to draw it out. And how do you draw out these things? You've got to be proactive and you've got to be vocal. There's, there's, you, gotta, you have to have a plan. Because I'll tell you, some people are natural encouragers. I've known some. They, it just flows out of them. You know what you know about those? You know, you know what you know or what is a truth about a natural encourager? People like to be around them. Years ago, there was a friend at the church that I was pastoring, and he had the gift of encouragement. That man, you wouldn't talk two minutes to him, and somehow, some way, I don't know how he would do it, he would, he would be complimenting, he would be encouraging, he would be noticing, he would have your full, like he was, it was just unreal how wonderful it was. And I told him, I said, you know, you have the, you have the gift of encouragement. And he goes, what do you mean? It was so natural to him, he didn't even, he, it's just, it's like a fish in water. He just, it just, he just did it. And I, said, and I said, Rick, every time I have a conversation with you, every time I hear you talking to somebody else, I always 
And I shared a few of those ideas. He goes, oh, really? He goes, I said, do you understand? Not everyone does that. I said, I'm the pastor, and I don't even encourage as well as you do. I have to work at it. But wherever you're at in this, whether it comes naturally to you or not, this is a gift, this is an exercise, this is something that God wants you to do because for you to grow in great faith in God and great love for one another, He wants you to grow in your encouragement to each other, being an encourager, not a discourager. Because I've known people like that too. And I don't pull those aside and say, wow, look at all, you have the gift of discouragement. (laughs) No, I don't. You know what that's called? They're called critics, complainers. And if they have the gift of criticism and the gift of complaining, let me tell you what, just like the encourager, it's contagious. The critic and the complainer, that's also contagious, but in, a, in the disease area where it's not good. It's, you know, critic, complain, COVID can understand, you know, there's a, there's a similarity there. You don't want them. You don't want to catch it. I'll tell you what, though. You ever have one of those friends to where you're doing great, everything's going fun, you're having a great day, and then all of a sudden, yeah, they start complaining, and your like, happy meter starts going ding, 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 ding. And sometimes you don't even realize it. You have a conversation, they're complaining, they're negative, they're criticizing, there's something. And then you're just kind of going along and then you leave and you go, I feel like blah, I feel bad. Like, what happened? Sometimes you understand it, sometimes you don't. But you caught the complaining bug. And you're, you, don't have sim- you haven't shown symptoms in terms of you're not complaining yet but you've, you've caught the, the virus. And it's going to be a matter of time. If you don't handle that, guess what you're going to start doing? You're going to start complaining. You're going to start criticizing. It is a serious. It's, 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 it's how things happen to understand this. But God wants us to be encouragers. He wants us to be exhorters. To exhort is actually a spiritual gift that Paul talks about when he wrote the letter to the church in Rome. The gift of exhortation to lift, to lift up. That literally what it means to lift up, to build up, not tear down, not destroy. We need more people in this world that are builder-uppers, that are encouragers. We need far fewer. We don't need the destroyers. We don't need the tear-downers. We don't need the critics. We don't need the complainers. And I'll tell you what, it's not easy sometimes because we all find ourselves a time here, a time there where we're in the complaining mode. We're in the criticizing mode. And we can get into these habits of thought, habits of conversations where we kind of go there real fast. And if we're not careful, these things happen and we don't even realize it. And then we wonder why no one's hanging around. We're wondering where everyone's at. Well, no one wants to be around a critical person, a complainer. A critiquer. Oh, I have the spiritual gift of, dis- of criticism. You ever heard that before? You know, no, you know, they just, that's just trying to justify their critical nature. You know, when somebody is encouraging you or criti- when people that have poured into your life, people that you know love you, then yes, you give them permission to offer, hey, you know, you need to straighten out this or, hey, could you this and others. Others, you know, the, you know, that's not true. They do not have the gift of criticism. It's not a gift. But Paul is clearly here. And I want us to turn back to Ephesians chapter 1. In verse uh, uh, 17, he says, I, I pray for you constantly. And here's how he prays. Asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight. Pay attention to how Paul is praying for these people. Because it's how we should pr- be praying for one another. When you want to pray for your friends, when your family, your husband, your wife, your children people that you love that are close to you. You want to pray for them? Paul here said pray for them that they give them uh, spiritual wisdom and insight. There is a wisdom in this world that the Bible says is actually foolishness. There's a way that seems right. There's a way that seems, oh, this is how you get to heaven or this is how you're to live your life. The world it says it seems right, it makes sense, but the Bible says it's wisdom that's, that's part of the wisdom of this world. It's worldly and it actually is a scam. It's a sham. That the wisdom that the world offers will end in destruction. 
There's a way that seems right. And so today, right now, in the life that you live, you need to know the wisdom that comes from God. You need to know how to be discerning in your life and how God wants you to live. And, what, and not just how to live to do right and wrong, but just how to navigate this world that we're living in. You need the fellowship. You need the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking directly into your life. You hear Him because He's going to guide you. And I'll tell you right now, <clears throat> there are often times when God speaks, you're going to go, huh? When you hear him and you know what he's saying, at times it's going to be contrary. It's not going to make sense to what you think should be done. Do you think when God told Gideon 30,000 soldiers are too many, you need to whittle it down against this huge army, that didn't make sense. It It didn't make sense, and he whittled it down to 300. It was completely contrary to any level of military strategy. Yet it was required for Gideon to trust God in that. And there are going to be times God's going to ask you to do things. He's going to to give you a, you're going to have a sense about it. But yet it's not going to make sense. But you know God's speaking to you. You know it. You've been and you've prayed it through. You've got a sense that God has said this. And then now you're going to walk by faith. How? Why? Because that's how... Great people of God are known, great, their great faith and their great love for God. And how do you exercise faith? It means you're trusting God when you hear His voice, even when it doesn't make sense, even when no one may understand it, but you heard from God. It doesn't mean jumping out in the dark and saying, well, I guess. No, you don't jump until you hear God tell you jump. If you haven't heard God tell you jump, you don't jump. Just like Peter in the boat. When he saw Jesus, did he jump out of the boat? Nope, he didn't. When did he jump out of the boat? When he said, God, if it's you, bid me come. And guess what? Jesus said, come. Peter heard his voice. He said, it's dark out there. There's a lot of waves. It's stormy. I see someone out there walking on the waters. It don't make sense. I'm a fisherman. I know what can walk on water and what can't. But he said, bid me come. Call me out there. And it's when he heard the voice of Jesus. He says, my eyes can deceive me. But when I hear now, I know my voice of my Savior. I know the voice of my Savior. And when he had heard Jesus speak, that's all he needed to hear. And he got out of the boat. And that's what great faith requires, knowing the voice of God. It doesn't mean just jumping out of the boat because you think it's what you need to be doing. Don't don't be making decisions like that unless you hear God speaking to you. And you can't know what God's speaking to you until you've developed the habit of listening to His voice. And there are many Christians that are walking around here, oh, I don't know about God, I don't know what to do. They haven't spent time in His Word, they haven't spent time in prayer, they haven't been listening, they haven't to even know the voice of God. And when God speaks, they they don't even see it. They don't even recognize it when He speaks. Paul said, I pray to the spiritual wisdom and understanding, knowledge of God. Second prayer request, he said, I pray also that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you will understand with confidence the hope that we have. Oh, yeah, understanding the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. He said, pray for knowledge, pray for wisdom. Then he also says in verse 19, three times he said, I pray, I pray, I pray. The third one is verse 19. He said, I pray also that you will understand the incredible greatness. Expand their wonder, the, uh, the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe. God wants to expand your knowledge in him. He wants to expand your wisdom. Knowledge is a lot of know-how. Wisdom is knowing how to use it. But wonder, to expand your understanding of his greatness... That's where the wonder comes in. That comes the awe. That comes to just having, it's, it's more, it's that sense of how great God is in our lives. I want to share with you a few practical, practical ways. I'm going to bullet them fast because we're coming to a close here. How you can be an encourager like Paul was here. Number one, first of all, just do what Paul did. Well, what did Paul do? He took the time to sit down and write a letter. That's what we're reading here. That's a letter that he wrote to this church. You don't have to raise your hand, but wasn't the last time you sat down and wrote a letter to a friend? 
Not an email, not a text, but a letter. Write a handwritten card expressing your gratitude and thankfulness to somebody that's either just important to your life or somebody that's done something nice for you. We should always have a habit of taking time to write out a letter of thankfulness or encouragement or just to say hi, but a card or a letter. You know, let's say a card. I mean, just think about it. What would you rather receive from a friend? A follow-up text, hey, thank you, that was nice. A follow-up email, thank you, that was nice. Or you're, you're pleasantly surprised by a, a card or a letter in your mailbox. Something tangible that you can hold on to. Something that they've handwritten with their own hand. There's power in taking the time. If you re- hey, keep going. I'm not saying don't text to say thank you. I'm not saying don't email and follow up with a thank you. There are times and places for all that. I'm not you know, call them up and all that's good. But there are times where... You should be in the habit of sitting down and writing out a card. I don't do this as often as I would like, but I know that there are many people in this church today that have received a handwritten card from me. It's been a while. I've got to get back in the habit or more in the habit. It's a beautiful way that you can express your gratitude and love. How I do this, I go to Half Price Bookstore because that's where you can get really inexpensive thank you cards. Half Price. Well, you can go also and get really inexpensive Christmas cards around Christmas season too. I do it there as well. But you can get stationery and, gift and, 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 and sympathy cards or just, just, you know, a blank card that just you can write whatever you want or a thank you card. You know, I have all those options. That's one way to go about it. Do that. Next thing I do is uh, buy a fancy pen that you only use for that that moment it's not just you know it's not just any big ballpoint you know go sp- spend a little money get it oh, that's a nice pen something that you know makes you want to use it because we need all the in- incentive we need sometimes I have that as well a nice pen I only use when I write on my cards I have some stationary card stock things like that do this and then second, what Paul did, he says that would you follow in his advice? It says Paul prayed for them constantly. How can you be an encourager? How can you be, uh, pray for the people that you love? I'm going to give you a few tips on this one to be very practical about it. When somebody calls you up or you find out there's a need and you feel led that you're going to pray for them, Specifically, if they've called you up or if they come to you and say, hey, I have a need, please keep this in prayer. Right then, right there, don't say, after you say, yes, I will, pray for them right there, right then. It doesn't matter if you're at McDonald's. It doesn't matter if you're at the mall. It doesn't matter if you're in the H-E-B hall. It doesn't matter. In that moment, stop and pray for them. How many times have I had situations where it was out in public, it was somewhere else, the need was brought up, I learned not to say, oh, I'll pray for you because who knows, I might forget. If I've said I'm going to pray for them, I don't want to forget. I don't want to say something and not deliver. So in that moment, I'm going to say, Look, can we pray right now? Let's pray right now. There's been many people in this sanctuary. It's happened just yesterday, even on the phone. Uh, Miss Evelyn Garcia called uh, because her mother is in the hospital. And she wanted to give me an update. But before the, before the phone call was over, I said, let's pray. And we prayed. Pray for your friends. That's how you can be a tremendous encourager and strengthener to the people around you. And also get deep. And by that I mean... There's phrases like, oh, you know, I cannot thank you enough. Like, there are things that you say that make more of an impact. Here are some phrases. I cannot thank you enough or words cannot express how much dot, dot, dot. That's a good sentence starter to help you express your thankfulness. Be, in other words, get deep. In other words, be specific. Be specific. How many times has someone said, oh, I, I appreciate you, and you wanted to ask, what do you appreciate? <laughs> you, you know, you want to know. 
And if they're specific, there's a lot of times I've had, oh, pastor, I really appreciated that message. I don't rarely ask this, but I often want to ask, what about it do you appreciate? And when someone offers us a general encouragement, think that we're, I'm blessed, don't get me wrong, we enjoy those, but if you want, you want it to really have impact and power, be specific. Be specific. Get deep. Here are other ways you can get deep. I am more grateful to you than you'll ever know, dot, dot, dot. And then give them an example. Or I'm eternally grateful. Or you have my deepest thanks. <clears throat> I'll never forget your support and kindness because dot, dot, dot. Excellent ways to start expressing your gratitude and your thankfulness as the Apostle Paul did. Another way is, you know, call them. Right now, who's somebody you need to call and tell them you're grateful to them? And here's why. There's somebody in your life, probably three to five, maybe more, people in your life <clears throat> that you need to proactively pick up your phone and call. Well, I haven't, I haven't heard from them. doesn't matter. It's your responsibility right now. It's what God is laying on your heart to do. Don't wait for them. Be proactive. Call them and ask them how they're doing. And have a specific compliment in mind. Be sincere about it. Hey, I've missed you. I've missed our time. Da 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 da. How are you doing? Are you okay? Maybe follow that up with a card. Maybe that followed up in other ways, but maybe, maybe a phone call is required. For some, a gratitude gift. When's the last time uh, you thought of it? It doesn't have to be expensive either. There's small things. You'd be in a, you know, a gift shop. Not even a gift shop. You can be somewhere somehow. You see it in the checkout line at H-E-B or something small, but yet it reminds you of a person. Oh, they would like that. They, this was something they would appreciate, and it's not but $10, it's not but $5, it's, it doesn't have to be a big deal, but it's something small, in that moment, take it, buy it, don't buy it, please pay for it, don't take it. <clears throat> Get it, and give it to them, appreciation gift. Who here likes to receive appreciation gifts? Okay, for the rest of you that don't, <laughs> I'll check your polls afterwards. Uh, we like appreciation gifts just because, just because. Uh, and then finally, if we wrap this up here, another really good way to show appreciation, to make people feel good and to be a complimenter is when appropriate, do it in public. Make that done in public. Appreciate them in public. That goes a long way too. Maybe it's around a group of friends. It's not just one-on-one. -on -one. There are sometimes opportunities where you can make it public. Maybe that just means uh, <clears throat> where social media comes in some of it. Maybe you Facebook you publicly in Facebook. Hey, I want to just say a shout out to you know so and so dot dot dot. He or she's awesome. Here's why. Boom 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 boom. That's it. Find a way to make it public. Uh, number eight, one of the things you think, well, what do I, you know, think about that person or those people and just make a list, you know, make a list, make a list of three or four things that you, that you admire about them, write it down and then put that in the, in the card or put that, let them know, hey, here's three things that I admire about you. Here's three things that I think make you special. I've even heard of people hosting a party. Invite your closest friends. And then tell them, you know what, this party is for you guys. It's for you. I'm doing this because I enjoy spending time with you. I enjoy this because there, you've done this, this, this. You're this way, this way, this way. I enjoy that and this. And I'm just doing this to show my appreciation of how much I value and love each and every one of you all. And here's, what, here's your marching instructions, okay? There's uh, Eric, would you mind uh, helping me here? These are in stacks of three, but I think we might not have enough, so we might have to get creative. One, two, three, four. There's like 21, but there's more than 21 p adults here. Anyway, uh, we've got more cards. We can get them. 
These are in stacks of three. So hold them here and... Uh, Josh, can we, oh, you, you got your hands full. Emma, can, would you like to come up? Would you mind coming up here too? Be sure to get one for yourself. Be sh- and Emma, get one for yourself. <clears throat> these are in stacks of three. What we have here, hold these for just a moment. Uh, can you just start passing through so they're in stacks of three? Uh, start passing them out. We'll give them to one married couple right now, one per married couple, and if there's leftovers, and then you each, uh, a married couple can get each their own. Uh, what Eric and Emma, just give them out all the adults. What we have here is three thank you cards or sympathy cards in th- with three envelopes, and they're all self-stamped. Stamps. You have no excuse. No excuse. I don't want you just to hear what I have to say and think that it's a good idea. I want to encourage you and give you the habit. You've got three cards, three envelopes, three stamped envelopes. Don't waste my money. So what you're going to do is here's my request. This is the request. I'd like for one of these three cards be to somebody that you know in this church, at least one of them. The other two are up to you. So how do I do that? Here's what I want, also what I want you to do. I'm going to give you, uh, everyone pull out your phone, all right? How often do I ask you to pull out your phone? Not that often, all right? Pull out your phone, and then I want you to go to your messaging system. <clears throat> now I'm, I, I want you, uh, I want you to text, I'm going to give you a number. This number is going to, you're going to text this number and it's going to go to a form that the church has. So with your phone open, how many has your phone and is ready? I want you to type in the number 512-890. So it's 512-890-0701. I'll repeat this. It's right up there. 512 it's on, the, it's on the wall or on the behind me. But don't text offering. Don't text offering. I'm going to tell you the word to text. It's going to be a different word. <clears throat> it'll, if you text offering, it'll send you to, to give to Calvary Worship Center, and then you'll have to give. But instead of, text, uh, instead of texting the word offering, I want you to text the word new, N-E-W. So type that number in your phone. And then in the messaging, just write the, the, letter, the word new, and then hit enter. New. <clears throat> if that number. Within a microsecond, you'll get a link that'll come right back to you. And you click on that link, and it will take you to a form. How many of you have done that already? You're sitting looking at a form. All right. <clears throat> that is a form. There's a lot to it. You don't need to, all you need to fill out is here's what I want to ask you to do. I want you to put your name, your email, and your phys- or your mailing address. Your name, <clears throat> your email, and your mailing address. That form will come back to the church site and I will not... Uh, before we put anything in print, it will all be, you'll never, like, anything like this is always safe within the ministry here. <clears throat> but I would like to do is to be able to put together a list of where if somebody wants to mail you a letter or a card, they have access to your mailing address. So if you put in your name, your email, and your physical address and hit send, the church will get notified and I'll collect those together. And I want to I continue over the weeks. We're moving into the season of thankfulness as well. I want to I take away any and all obstacles for you so that you can be an encourager, so you can be an encouragement. So what are your marching instructions? You've got three stamped addressed, not dressed, but three stamped envelopes with cards. One of those cards be to somebody within the fa- your, your Calvary Worship Center family. The other two, whoever the Lord lays in your heart, write, sit down, write them a card, be specific, express your gratitude, be an encourager. 
after you do this, I encourage you to go and you get your own cards if you don't do this already. Go find your own favorite cards that you like. Go buy that good pen, that nice pen that you're going to use for writing things like this. I even have a calligraphy pen that I pull out. You, you dip it in the ink and it gets, you know, it's, it's, it's fun to do that. I haven't used that one in a while. I might have to now. And get into the habit. I knew a pastor many years ago. I'm not there, but many years ago, every week, he had a really large church. He would sit down. And he would write 20 to 25 handwritten cards to various people. You do not realize, perhaps you do, how much encouragement God has given you for others. You say, but Pastor Matt, I'm hurting. Encourage others. That'll pull you out of a lot of it. That'll pull you such the positive way. When you begin to be proactively encouraging others, guess what begins to happen? It begins to come back on you. When you begin to sow encouragement into the lives of others, you're going to begin reaping encouragement from others. God's going to find a way. He's going to meet that need in your heart and your life. Don't wait for them. You start today. So with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, Heavenly Father, I thank you for the encouragers in the house today. I thank you for their faithfulness. And I pray that they will, I just pray an anointing to rest upon these cards that they've been given. That you're going to give, they already know, a few of them already know who they're going to write that card to. And they're going to be encouragers. And they're going to be specific. And God, they're going to be a blessing, as Paul was. And they're going to pray for that friend. They're going to pray for that loved one. They're going to pray for that person, not just send off cards. The God, that you will give them a spirit of wisdom and revelation. And that they will have an understanding of the great power within them that you have given us through your son, Jesus Christ. I thank you, God, that you're going to, we're going to share the grace that you've given to us to others through these cards. That we, too, will be encouragers. And that we too will be known for our great faith in God and our love for one another. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Blessings, church. Thank you for being in the house today. We have a fifth Sunday fellowship, which is coming in two weeks. There's a sign-up sheet in the back. It's the fifth Sunday. We're going to have food and we're going to have fellowship. And I enjoy so much of the good food and fellowship that you all are so uh, I'm trying to be encouraging from right now just to get go. <clears throat> I think of Bernice's dish that she brings. The it's the uh, it's the broccoli or or it's this it's a slaw kind of Asian salad mix. See how I did that? Complimented her. I was specific. Yes. Praise and be raised. Yes, if I had the time, I don't because it's already 20 after. I just, I could go around here. There's so many ways I could compliment each, every one of you all, specifically in ways that you're a blessing to me, and you are. As you leave, enjoy one another's uh, company. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.